This video is for junior high science. We're looking at the highlights for pages 233 to 239. So we're looking at section 13.3, the United States enters the war. So find where it says Pearl Harbor in bold, highlight that, and draw a line from Pearl Harbor to the United States enters the war because you're going to want to remember that it was this action on the part of the Japanese that brought the, um, uh, the Americans into the war. So, uh, America had been helping the Allies for a while, giving uh, tanks and airplanes and weapons, things like that, but she was refusing to fully enter the war. Now, Japan, remember, wanted to control Asia and the islands of the Pacific. The only thing truly standing in their way was the United States. And they told each other the power of the United States Navy must be destroyed. They believed that if Pearl Harbor were destroyed, then it would be too hard for the Americans to bring other ships to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, ships would have to be brought from the Atlantic through the Panama Canal or around South America and then brought into the Pacific Ocean. So they thought if we can destroy everything that's at Pearl Harbor, we can break the will of the American people and we can make it too hard for them to uh, fight at all in the Pacific. And they believed, falsely, that the Americans would rather give up than fight. Uh, the Japanese were a very, very militaristic society. Their, their, uh, everything about their life was ruled by the military. Young boys would go into the military at the age of, uh, you know, between six, seven, right around in there. Uh, very regimented, very strict. So they looked at the Americans with, um, you know, their freedoms and their uh, comparative success. Remember, we just come out of the Great Depression at this point. And they thought the Americans were soft, that they were weak. And they found out quickly that was not the case. So highlight that bold date there, December 7th, 1941. December 7th, 1941. So just before this, Japan had sent officials to Washington, D.C. to talk peace. And this was all just a big, fake act. They had absolutely no intentions of accepting the peace terms. Uh, so meanwhile, this raid was about to go on. So almost 200 Japanese planes took off from aircraft carriers and flew over Pearl Harbor. This was the first wave of the attack. In the second wave, 170 more planes arrived. And in less than two hours, seven of the eight battleships, as well as many other ships, were badly uh, damaged or even sunk. And over 2,000 Americans were killed. Um, so for Americans on the mainland, they were shocked when all of a sudden their radio broadcasts were interrupted by this announcement that Pearl Harbor had been bombed. And the Japanese quickly found out they had been very mistaken. Far from breaking the American spirit, the um, bombing of Pearl Harbor united America like never before. So this is underlined, uh, but highlight on December 8th, 1941, the United States and Canada declared war on Japan. Uh, Canada had already been at war with Germany because they sided with uh, Great Britain, but now they declared war on Japan as well. Uh, so just a couple days later, Germany and Italy, Japan's allies, declared war on the United States. Turning to page 234, <clears throat> you can see our map there showing the allies and the Axis powers and those countries that were neutral. So we got the allies in yellow, we've got the Axis powers in purple, and then the neutral countries are shown in green. So as you can see on our map there, the Allies really, really outnumbered the, um, the Axis powers. Unfortunately, this was not enough to uh, bring about an immediate conclusion to the war. There were still many, many years of fighting to go. So on page 234, uh, find where it says they planned a great invasion of the country to be led by American General Dwight D. Eisenhower. So highlight that. They planned a great invasion of the country, uh, that's France, to be led by American General Dwight D. Eisenhower. Highlight the date, a little bit below that, June 6, 1944, or D-Day. So know the date and know the, uh, the name of the day. And this was uh, the uh, greatest amphibious or by water attack uh, ever, ever in history. 
So they hit the coast, they fought fiercely against the Germans, and then they were able to free the city of Paris in August of that same year. And then the ground troops marched towards Berlin. Um, highlight 1945, May 8th was declared VE Day. And that means Victory in Europe Day. So May 7th was the day that the Germans surrendered, but May 8th was declared the Victory in Europe Day. So no 1945 and May 8th and VE Day. So now Germany was defeated and Japan was the only enemy for the Allies to defeat. Um, the attack on Pearl Harbor had severely damaged the Navy, but the most important thing was that the, um, the airplane carriers had been at sea when the Japanese attacked, and that was something they had not planned for. So with those carriers, the United States was still able to carry out uh, airplane attacks and naval battles. And within a year, the Navy was entirely ready for battle again. Uh, the Japanese had lost a lot during the war, but they refused to surrender. Uh, the leaders in charge didn't really seem to care about civilian lives being lost as their non-soldiers. Uh, they didn't care about the thousands of Japanese soldiers who were being killed. Um, many of them would fight to the death. They would rather die than surrender, and that's how they were trained. So the Allies knew that something big had to happen in order for Japan to surrender. And that came about with the atomic bomb. So highlight that bold term, atomic bomb. Just below that highlight, on June 6, 1945, an American bomber, this continues on to page 235, an American bomber dropped an atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Continue highlighting, a few days later, another bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. You can see the picture there of the mushroom cloud of the atomic explosion at uh, Hiroshima. Highlight, World War II, the largest war in history, had come to an end. So no, it was this atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki that brought it to an end. Uh, before we continue on with the war, let's look at the Nisei of the 442nd. These are Japanese-American patriots. Um, so highlight uh, the term Nisei. It's in bold there in our paragraph. Highlight just above that, American-born, American-educated sons of Japanese immigrants. These were the Nisei, the second generation. And uh, they were known for displaying unflinching devotion and courage for their country. By the end of the war, they had uh, earned the distinction of being, highlight this, the most decorated infantry unit in all of the United States Army. Together, the Nisei received seven presidential unit citations, so that's uh, a recommendation uh, and honor for the entire unit, and 18,143 individual awards and decorations. Uh, one battalion of the division, the 100th Infantry Battalion, was known as the Purple Heart Battalion. Uh, you get a purple heart if you're wounded um, or killed in battle. So because so many of its numbers died or were wounded, they were known as the Purple Heart Battalion. So you can see a picture of some of the men there, and they, were, um, they played a very important part in many battles, and they fought with unquestioning loyalty for their country, uh, even during a time when many people were doubting Japanese Americans. So uh, a real, real set of heroes there. Uh, so let's continue on with the end of the war here. Um, at the end of the war, the Allied soldiers found German prison camps called concentration camps, and they found men, women, and children locked up there with very little food, very, very sick, terrible conditions. So at the very bottom of page 235, highlight, the murder of the Jews and others became known as the Holocaust. Turning to page 236, let's look at our people in history, Colonel Benjamin O. Davis Jr. and the Fighting Red Tails. Highlight this gentleman's name in bold, Benjamin O. Davis Jr. He came from a military family. His father served in the Spanish-American War, World War I, and World War II. And he became the first black American to reach the rank of general in any branch of the United States Navy. So quite a man there. His son, uh, Benjamin O. Davis Jr., followed in his footsteps. 
Uh, he trained uh, the 99th Pursuit Squadron's 13 young black American men at Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. And they entered World War II in North Africa, and they fought under the leadership of Major George Spanky Roberts. And Colonel Davis returned to train more cadets. So highlight their group name, it's in bold there, the Fighting Red Tails. So know that together with Benjamin O. Davis Jr. And these men distinguished themselves as courageous, skillful pilots. They destroyed 261 enemy aircraft and damaged 148. They flew 1,578 missions and 15,553 sorties. And these are short missions, usually flown by a single plane. They became the first pilots to sink a German destroyer single-handedly. A destroyer is a big ship. They flew 200 bomber escort missions without losing a single bomber plane to enemy fighters. And Benjamin O. Davis Jr. became the first black officer in history to attain the rank of Major General in the United States Air Force. So quite a man and quite a group here. On page 237, under Leaders of the Allies, highlight that the leaders of the Big Four, highlight the definition of the Big Four, the four most powerful allied countries, and highlight these leaders. They were uh, Jiang Kai-shek of China, Joseph Stalin of the Soviet Union, Sir Winston Churchill of Great Britain, and Franklin D. Roosevelt of the United States. So highlight those four men and know who they were. There were also many important generals, uh, General Douglas MacArthur, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, George S. Patton, Omar Bradley, and George C. Marshall. Highlight this. General Eisenhower, who was often called Ike, later became President of the United States. Under Douglas MacArthur, Hero of the Pacific, highlight General Douglas MacArthur. And he was in charge of the, uh, the troops that were stationed in the Philippines. At the same exact time that the Japanese were attacking Pearl Harbor, they launched an attack on the Philippines. So eventually, uh, General MacArthur was forced to leave the Philippines, but he swore to the people that he would return, and he did indeed. He personally led the uh, return attack to the Philippines. And if you turn the page, you can see the picture of him wading ashore as he returned to the Philippines in 1944. So just below that picture, highlight his words there. They are in bold, I shall return. That was his promise. Follow down the paragraph a bit, find where it says after the Japanese surrendered. Highlight, after the Japanese surrendered, President Truman made General MacArthur supreme commander for the Allied powers. So MacArthur was the one who officiated the Japanese surrender ceremonies on the uh, USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay. And then last thing to highlight on page 239, find Jacob de Chaser in bold. Around him, highlight, one missionary to Japan made headlines all over the world. Jacob de Chaser, an American soldier during the war, had been captured by the Japanese. Now, uh, this happened in the famous bombing of Tokyo, led by General James Doolittle. For three years, the Shazer was imprisoned and tortured in Japan. Then, someone gave him a Bible. Through reading the Bible, the Shazer came to accept Christ as his personal savior. His hatred for the Japanese turned to love, and as soon as he was uh, possible after he was freed, he returned to Japan. So that says uh, quite a lot about the, the power of, um, of the gospel in not just one man's life, but in many people's lives. Uh, through DeShazer's testimony, Mitsuo Fuchida, the exact same guy who had led the Pearl Harbor bombing raid, became a Christian in 1950. So quite a story there, and uh, very, uh, very interesting uh, to see how the, uh, the light of the gospel can turn two men who are enemies into not just friends, but brothers in Christ. So those are the last of our highlights for today. Make sure that you are uh, continuing to study the uh, Gettysburg Address. You will need to send me a video of you saying that next week, and you'll get your schedule for that on Friday. Have a great rest of your day.